You come back, and the only ECW appearance that you have in a match is against CM Punk in right. 2006. You lose to CM Punk. Mm -hmm. You get brought back. So when do you, do you have a contract, and how long was this contract for, and how long did it actually last? My contract was four years. It was for shit money. Most of us got paid $35,000, $40,000. It was shit money. Um, a year? Yeah. Our hotels were, weren't paid for. Only thing that was paid for was our flights. So I was literally losing money being on the road. I had to pay for car. I had to pay for hotels. I had to pay for food. Um, when I got the phone call, Dreamer said, Vince wants to hire you. I said, shut up. I said, no, he doesn't. Because I knew that Vince wasn't, and he was a body guy. He goes, no. He says, we're bringing back ECW. He's hiring a, a few of the originals. They want you. We're going to pick our feud back up. Paul and I have complete control over it. We're going to run just like we did before. And he says, and uh, it's going to be great. And I said, okay. I said, so I don't have to go to Ohio Valley. He goes, no. I said, and you guys are in control. You and Paul. Yes, it's our control. That's the only way I would sign. And I knew it was shit money, but he said at the end of the year, we get bonuses and stuff like that. So I said, okay, you know, to get my shot. Um, signed. And I was like a every other week guy. You know, we were doing, that's when they were working four nights a week and then doing TV, uh, you know, Friday, Saturday, you know, you do Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you did, you were at Raw Monday and the SmackDown ECW on Tuesday. I think that's what it was like. Yeah. And then you flew home on Wednesday to turn around all the boat and be back on the road again Friday. And I was on like every other week. I was working punk on the house shows, Shannon Moore, Stevie Richards, um, and I worked Sabu the very first night at the ECW arena. And after that arena show, that's when RVD and Kurt Angle worked. After that arena show, Vince took it back over. And that's when he started putting his guys in there. And once that started happening, I wanted out of there because it sucked. It wasn't ECW. None of it was ECW. Um, it was a Disney-fied version. He started putting all his guys in there. Um, and my one TV match with Punk was supposed to go eight minutes. It got cut down to six. Um I tapped out too quick on Punk's move. I, I misheard him. I thought he was saying tap, and he was saying raise his head. We got miscommunicated, so I tapped out too quick for that. Um, but it was – I hated being there. Like, when I – Francine and I would find out we weren't working the show, we would weasel our way out of the building and go to the next town just so we wouldn't have to be there. Because you had to be there at the building by 11 o'clock in the morning, and you didn't get out of there until, like, 11 or 12 o'clock at night if you were lucky. So there were long days for no money. Um, and I was, Paul talked to me, uh, he said they were, he wanted to start pushing me, you know, so I started going over on guys. I started beating Shannon Moore and Stevie Richards. And then I worked with Kevin Thorne and hurt my back again. And, and once I hurt my back, I was done. I didn't want to be there. And they released me. Well, Vince's doctor called me one day and said, you know, he wanted me to come back. Vince wants you back in the ring. I said, dude, I said, I can barely walk. My back's gone. He said, well, come back to work, you know, or come back. He said, we'll give you some steroid in or some cortisol injections and you'll be able to get back in the ring. I said, you may not have known this, but I was a high level baseball player growing up. I mean, like really high. And I was really good. I said, and I've seen guys take those cortisol injections and I know what it does. I said, I'm not taking that shot. He goes, well, if you don't take the shot, Vince is going to fire you. I said, OK, then fire me. I said, because me walking is more important, more important to be at WWE. And like a couple weeks later, uh, Laronitis called me and let me go. And he goes, we're going to let you go, CW. And I said, sweet. Thank you. I said, can I go back to Japan? And he was kind of taken back. He's like, um, yeah, you just can't go to TNA for 90 days. I said, no problem. Wow. And that was January 17th of uh, 07. So you're describing a conversation you had with Bisk Man's doctor. And the doctor is telling you, by the way, if you don't take these shots, they're probably going to yeah. fire you. 100% he said that. He said, if you don't take those shots, Vince is going to fire you because he said he wanted me back. He said, you're not doing Vince any good being in the bed at home. I said, I can barely walk because I blew my L5 and S1. Wow. You know, that's a. Or, I don't, no, I didn't blow that. Down. I, I was bulging. So when I hurt my back working with Kevin Thorne, it wasn't Kevin's fault. It was just a mistake. Uh, that happened in the ring. But, yeah, he kept telling me that I need to come back and take their shots. And I was like, I'm not taking the cortisone shot. I know what it does. 
And but he said, well, Vince will fire you if you don't come back and if you don't take these shots and come back. His exact words were, you're not doing Vince any good being in that bed. You're not making him any money. I was like, well, fire me then. Me walk is more important to be in WWE. And two weeks later, they let me go. And of course, if you add, you know, you ask the daughter, whatever it is, they're going to nod the hell out of it. But why do I have to lie? Yeah, no, no reason no to. Reason. Yeah, no, of course, because, you know, there's many stories of exactly the description of you just, you know, the thing yeah. you just described that's happened to so many people. And uh, that's why there was probably lawsuits of many, many, many wrestlers yeah. just got together and did yeah, that. And I, I mean, and we all, I hated Larry Nardis anyway, because he was, he, he did something at uh, Hammerstone Ballroom to me and Shannon Moore in one of our matches. Uh, he was a complete ass, and karma got his ass finally. So, so what did he do? Because I've heard they, a story from Chase Stevens, and it's very disturbing. So he, um, when we went out, I was supposed to be the heel, and I'm like, I don't, I'm thinking to myself, why am I going to be a heel at the Hammerstone Ballroom? The last time these people have seen me was my I Quit match where I got a standing ovation. Um, so anyway, I go out, and I'm trying to be a heel. They're popping for me. Shannon Moore comes out. Now, I've known Shannon since he was like 16 years old. Shannon's a dear friend of mine. Uh, Cause we all started together with the Hardys and hurricane Helms and all of us started here in the Carolinas together. So we start working him as a baby face. And I think, was it James beard that I was our referee? Possibly. Anyway, Shannon gets his shine in the beginning. It's time for my heat. Shannon comes outside and says, they're on the headset telling me to go heel. Sorry, CW. So Shannon beats my ass for another couple minutes. And Larry Nice is on the headset. And he, this was his thing. The ref would go, CW, now your face. CW, now your heel. CW, now your face. And Shannon was supposed to be up. He was supposed to win that night. As I'm shooting him off for a cross body, it was a spot for a cross body, the ref says, go home now. CW, you're up, spine buster. Shannon comes off awkward, and I catch him awkward and hit him for a spine buster. One, two, he kicks out. The ref counts three. I'm sitting in the middle ring like, what the fuck just happened? And they and I go in the back and Larry Nice was on the headset. And he was the one that was switching it back and forth, screwing with us. And when I come in the back and then he gets all over us about uh, how we didn't, was it, how was he said it? I don't know. Shannon kind of went back at him because Shannon had been there longer than I had, even a little more clout. And she was like, what are you doing, you know, going back and forth, changing us from heel to baby? It makes no sense. And that was another reason I wanted to be done with that place. Yeah. I um if you're a John Larnitis guy or a girl, you're taken care of. And if you're not, you're yeah. not. And especially I've if you're a girl story, him. And I've heard stories from both sides. Uh, you know, when you talk to him talk to wrestlers who've had a great experience or a terrible experience. And uh there's some there's some stories out there. Here's the, the one thing um that was told to me is when they were given the agent reports, Dean Malenko was one of the agents. And he was the one that always had to send it in. Well, when you tell him about the critiques and what you had to do and things like that, uh, Vince calls him one day and says, you got all these critiques with all the ECW guys, but you never say anything bad about CW Anderson. He said, why not? He said, because there's nothing bad to say about CW. He goes, what do you mean? He said, CW's work's almost perfect. He said, he's slow. He's methodical. He's a heel. He takes his time. He gets over as a heel. Vince says, bullshit. He said, there's something wrong with him. He said, fine. He said, what's wrong? He said, nobody's that perfect. He said, the CW is as close as they came. This is coming from Dean Malenko to Tommy Dreamer to me as we're standing in a hotel room. He says, well, what's wrong with him? Find something wrong. He says, well, he probably could be, could be a tad more intense, but that's it. So the very next week, we're in Texas, and I work with Shannon Moore. And after the match, I'm sitting in my chair changing, and I said, I see Ted DiBiase, T Ted DiBiase at my 11 o'clock walking towards me. I stand up to introduce myself because I've never met Ted, Ted before. I said, hey, Ted, I said, I'm sitting. He goes, CW, I know exactly who you are. You're the reason I'm here. He said, Vince sent me down here to find out the hype was is true about you. He said, son, it is. And it wasn't just a little bit longer, a, little, a couple more weeks or another month. It's when I had mm -hmm. there an uh, issue with Laranitis.